Today, I am here to discuss about the effect of seismic load on a structure. Before starting our discussion, I would like to discuss about the various loads which may occur on any structure. First one is dead load. Dead loads are the majorly gravity load comes in any structure due to their structural members such as column, beams, slab, walls, parapet and many other members. The dead load are calculated on the basis of material density and their respective sizes. The IS code which deals in dead load is IS875 part 1. Now, the second load is live load. Live loads are the loads which occurs in any structure as per their occupancy and use. It is also gravity load which comes on slab, beam, stairs and balconies. IS 875 part 2 deals for these types of loading. Live load is applied all over the superstructure except the plinth. Generally, live load varies according to their type of building. Wind load. Wind load are the loads which comes in any structure primarily due to horizontal movement of wind relative to earth. The details of design for wind load are given in IS 875 part 3. Wind load is required to be considered in design especially when the height of building exceeds two times dimension traversed to the exposed wind surface. As per IS 875 part 3, there are six zones which is specified in the code based on the increasing wind speed. Now, seismic loads. Seismic loads are the loads comes in any structure when there is any sudden movement in tectonic plates of earth crust. The generation of stress due to this type of movement caused earthquake. Now, man-made load, explosion load, vehicle impact load and fire. Now, we comes in our main topic of discussion that is earthquake load. Earthquake load. Earthquake load is the load developed due to sudden re rapid release of stress waves during a brittle rupture of rock moss along a geological fault zone. Seismic motion consists of horizontal and vertical ground motions. The vertical motion usually having a much smaller magnitude. So, the horizontal motion of the ground cause most significant effect on the structure by shaking the foundation back and forth. As per IS code 1893 part 1, the India is divided into four zones as per severity of earthquake. Causes of earthquake. The main causes of earthquake are ground shaking, ground failure, tsunami and fire. Generation of earthquake. Earthquake generally occurs in the form of stress waves. There are two types of wave which may cause earthquake, body waves and surface waves. The body waves, these waves travels through the earth in all directions in all depth. Now, body wave further divided into two categories, compressional waves and shear waves. Compressional waves are or P waves. P waves are fundamentally pressure disturbance which travels through a member by alternately compression and expression the medium where particle motion is parallel to the direction of wave propagate. Shear waves. These waves travel more slowly than P waves and perpendicular in the direction of compressional waves. Now, the second type of waves is surface wave. Uh, it is also called love wave. The name the love is named after the scientist who discovered the, the existence of these waves A E love. These waves travel along the earth surface and most disastrous in nature. Relay waves. These are the ground roll waves and their action is similar to the waves on the surface of the water. Before discussing methodology, I would request you all to please download the following IS codes for better understanding of earthquake load pattern. IS 1893. This IS code deals with earthquake loading in all type of structure. This IS code is further divided into five parts. Part 1 deals with earthquake analysis provision for all type of structure. Part 2 covers liquid retaining structure. Part 3 deals with bridges and retaining wall. Part 4 it deals with provisioning of designing of earthquake resistant structure for industrial structure. Part 5 provides guidelines in designing of dams and embankments. Now, second IS code is IS4326. The code for earthquake resistant design and construction of building for masonry and timber constructions. 
IS 13828. This IS code deals with improving earthquake resistance design of low strength masonry building. IS 13920. This code used for ductile detail detailing of reinforced concrete structure subjected to seismic load. IS 13935. This code gives the guidelines about the seismic evaluation, repair, strengthening of masonry building. Now, method of calculation for earthquake forces. There are two types of methods mentioned in IS 1893 for analysis of earthquake. First one is equivalent lateral force procedure. The equivalent force method for an earthquake is defined as a set of lateral static force which will produce the same peak response of structure as the obtained by dynamic analysis of structure under the same earthquake. Then second method is dynamic analysis method. In this there are two methods for analysis of any structure, response spectrum method and time analysis method. Response spectrum method mainly deals for designing of multi-story building, irregular buildings, overhead tanks and bridge spires are often designed by this method time history analysis method. This method used for designing of highly important structure like nuclear reactor, large span structure or very tall building. Now let us discuss the lateral force method which is also called static force method in elaborated form as you all can see the total horizontal force base shear on any structure as per IS code 1893 part 1 given as V B equals to W multiplied with A H, where V B is base shear, W is total seismic weight, A H is horizontal seismic coefficient, V B base shear. Base shear is defined as seismic design of force which primary quantity involved in the force base earthquake resistance design building, seismic weight. It is assumed weight of the structure at a time of expected earthquake gives guidelines to consider full dead load and appropriate amount of imposed load in the calculation of seismic weight. Horizontal seismic coefficient A H. It is the modification factor to consider the effect of natural damping, natural period, model shapes, type of structure and place, subsoil condition, importance of structure. Now, in the slides you can easily see the how we calculate base shear with the help of seismic weight and horizontal seismic coefficient. The horizontal seismic coefficient formulated as A h equals to z by 2 multiplied by i by r multiplied by S a by g, where z is zone factor depending upon the zone of structure belongs to, i importance factor value of importance factor as per IS 1893-2016 clause 7.2.3 table number 8. You can see the importance factor value in the slide. Response reduction factor to make buildings economical design code allows some damage to reducing the cost of construction with the help of response reduction factor R which is higher for ductile building and smaller for brittle one. The value may derive from IS clause number 7.2.6 on table number 9. You can also see the values of response reduction factor in this slide. Average response acceleration coefficient denoted as SA by G. The net shaking of a building is a combined effect of the energy carried by earthquake at different frequencies and the natural period of building which is denoted by structural flexivity factor S A by G. The values for S A by G derived from a chart given in IS code 1893. For in derivation of the value of S A by G, we have to calculate natural period T. You can see this formula in the given slide. With the help of value of natural period T obtained from these, these formulas, we can get the value of average response acceleration coefficient S A by G from the curve given in the IS code. Now, after obtaining the value of A H and seismic weight, we can calculate the value of base shear. 
the base here is di distributed in multi story building as you can see the value of base here is more at ground story and subsequently decreases as we go in upper floors. The base here calculated as q equals to v b multiplied by w i h i square divided by summation of w i h i square where w is seismic weight h is the height of floor i i denoted for the number of floor. In this slide you can see the load combination we can use for the calculation of earthquake for different type of loading and type of building. In these slides you can easily see the effect of architectural aspect. So, we have to consider these points while planning earthquake resistant building. In first picture you can see the failure of overhead tank which is provided at the top floor during the earthquake. Second picture you can see the failure of building due to soft story provision in the lower story. Following points you have to consider while planning a building in earthquake prone zone. No floating columns or open diaphragm to be provided. Too close high rise building may face more damage due to ponding effect. Large size water tank on the roof should be avoided. Soft story if possible should be avoided. Unplanned concreting and removal of form work should not be done. While planning any structure with earthquake resistant the following parameter should be taken into consideration. You can see in the slide the parameter which we have to consider while planning in a building for earthquake prone area.